Uh, good morning students, today is lecture 26 under module 9 and in today's lecture we will solve some of the uh, problems related to ultrafiltration. So, let us see the problem 1, uh, I am just reading out the uh, statement. Uh, an ultrafiltration membrane is used to concentrate a 0 0.05 molar feed solution to 0.15 molar concentration at 25 degree centigrade. The upstream pressure is 4 atmosphere and the downstream pressure is 1 atmosphere. The solute rejection is 99 percent. So, you have been asked to calculate the effective pressure driving force during the start and during the end of the process, then fractional decrease in solvent flux at the end of the process. Uh, so, um, it is further given that for simplicity the concentration polarization effect can be neglected for the above process. Let us start how to uh, solve this problem. So, um, solute rejection is given. So, it is always a good practice to um, write down whatever uh, the data is given. Okay. So, solute rejection is given 90 percent, uh, feed concentration feed concentration uh, uh, at beginning it is given 0 0.05 molar uh, and permeate concentration concentration at beginning ok. So, it is equals to 0 0.05 into 1 minus 0 0.9 ok. So, 90 percent rejection that is why ok. So, 0 0.005 Okay, so, molar. So, it is considered that the concentration polarization is negligible. So, concentration it is given in the statement concentration polarization is negligible. So, that means the concentration at the upstream phase of the membrane is equal to the bulk of the concentration. So, what is the meaning of this? Now, concentration at upstream equals to bulk concentration okay so which is 0 0.05 molar okay now uh, further things feed side pressure it is given is for atmosphere so you have to calculate the effective pressure okay so effective pressure driving force means how it will be so effective pressure driving force okay so that is nothing but feed side pressure okay, minus osmotic pressure. So, th this is actually your uh, pressure driving force. So, now we have to calculate the osmotic pressure. So, osmotic pressure can be calculated okay, delta pi equals to R T delta C this you, you know we, last class also we have discussed. Okay. So, R is your gas constant T is your temperature and delta C is your Mm, concentration difference. So, which we can write that R equals to you can take R equals to 0 0.0821 into temperature is uh, given 25 degree centigrade to 298 Kelvin into delta C, delta C equals to 0 0.05 minus 0 0.005 in moles. Okay, that is what we have calculated. So, here delta pi is equals to 1.10 atmosphere. So, your effective pressure difference that becomes effective pressure driving force. Okay. Now, it becomes feed side pressure. So, feed side pressure is given is equals to 4 atmosphere 4 minus 1.10. Okay. So, it becomes 2.9 atmosphere. Right. So, at the end of the process salt concentration is given 0.15 mole. So, effective pressure driving force right at the end ok, at the end will be 4 minus this 0.0821 that same pi equals to CRT from that equation only into 298 okay, into 0.15 into 0.9. So, this becomes 0 0.69 atmosphere right. So, then as the solvent flux is proportional to the pressure difference, 
the fractional decrease can be calculated. So, you have been asked to calculate actually the fractional decrease in solvent flux. So, we can write this equation. So, fractional decrease in solvent flux how much actually decrease is happening uh, in the solvent flux okay um, so that we can calculate is that effective pressure driving force so that is nothing but effective pressure driving force okay um, so at start minus uh, effective pressure driving force effective pressure driving force okay at and whole divided by effective pressure driving force at the start right. So, we can calculate it 2.9 minus 0 0.69 okay. the effective driving force uh, at the beginning is 2.69 atmosphere minus 0 0.69 is the effective driving force during the uh, at the end of the process divided by 2.9. So, this is become 0 0.762. So, you can uh, say that a 76 percent decrease in initial solvent flux. Okay. So, occur uh, due to os um, osmotic a reduction in the effective pressure difference. So, this is what you have been asked to calculate. So, how much uh, what is the effective pre pressure driving force uh, at the beginning and at the end and uh, from this equation we found out that how much is the decrease in solvent flux occur from the initial solvent flux uh, to the end of the process right. So, uh, this is one of the very simple example actually uh, no much of calculation involved only you know that you have to use the uh, pi equals to CRT equation and that effective pressure driving force is start minus beginning that process this one. Okay. So, uh, let us see another uh, example uh, I am reading out that uh, actually the problem statement. Uh, so, uh, an ultra filtration module is used to concentrate a feed solution. The concentration of feed in the bulk is 0 0.6 mass percent, the flux of water through the membrane is 0.53 meter cube per meter square hour and mass transfer coefficient at the membrane is 3.6 into 10 power of minus 5 centimeter per second. The diffusivity of solute is given to be 9.2 into 10 power of minus 7 centimeter square per second. The solute rejection in the membrane is 90 percent. You have been asked to calculate the mass transfer film thickness, okay, the small delta, okay. the polarization modulus Cm by Cb that was and the solute concentration in the liquid near the membrane surface. Okay. The data given is mass transfer coefficient. Okay, that is K L. Okay, K L. It is given is 3.6 10 to the power of minus 5 centimeter per second. Solute diffusivity is also given. That is uh, D equals to 9.2 into 10 power of minus 7 centimeter square per second. So, your mass transfer film thickness mass transfer film thickness that is this lambda equals to d by k l right. So, it is 9.2 into 10 power of minus 7 divided by 3.6 into 10 power of minus 5. Okay. So, this is 0 0.025 centimeter. So, this is the thickness of the mass transfer film. Okay. So, further solute rejection is given uh, so that it R equals to 90 percent or you can write 0 0.9. Right. So, you have to find out the concentration polarization uh, modulus. Okay. So, your concentration polarization modulus. Okay. So, that is basically it is m, it is C m by C b. Okay. So, C m by C b 
so that equation equals to exponential of your j w by k l, j w is your uh, water flux divided by k l is the mass transfer coefficient. So, divided by r hmm, plus 1 minus r again exp exponential to the power of j w by k l. So, this is your uh, equation for uh, concentration polarization modulus. So, where C m is concentration at membrane surface and C b is bulk concentration. So, now we can calculate C m by C b equals to exponential to the power of put all the uh, values substituting everything point zero 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 one four seven divided by point zero 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 three six okay so divided by uh, point nine plus one minus point nine again exponent exponential to the power of point 0, 0, 0, 1, 4, 7 divided by point 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, equals to 5.2 mass percent. Okay. So, this is how you can calculate our uh, uh, concentration at the membrane uh, surface okay, using the uh, concentration polarization modulus equation. Let us see uh, another problem. Okay. Uh, this is a little big problem actually. So, uh, let us uh, do it slowly and understand how to proceed. So, I am reading the statement a tubular ultrafiltration membrane of 1.5 centimeter internal diameter and length of 2 meter is used to concentrate a macromolecular solution at 25 degree centigrade. The molecular weight of solution is 6000 with a concentration of 2 mass percent. The water flux through the membrane is 1.8 into 10 power of minus 3 meter cube per meter square second. The available applied pressure difference is 1.7 bar and the solute diffusivity through the membrane is 7.8 into 10 power of minus 7 centimeter square per second. So, it has been asked that what will be the flow velocity okay, in the tube that means you need to calculate V uh, mostly from the uh, Reynolds number. Okay. Um, we will see how, how we will do it. Okay. So, you have been asked to calculate what will be the flow velocity in the tube uh, that should be maintained to prevent the formation of a gel layer okay, on the surface of the membrane. So, the rejection coefficient is given as 0.98, solution viscosity is 5 centipoise, um, the gel formation is occurred at a concentration of 10.5 percentage. So, any leakage in the pores and fouling can be neglected. Okay. So, let us see how we will solve this. Okay. So, concentration okay, at which solute forms a gel, at what concentration the solute forms the gel that is what uh, is being uh, 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 we have to um, calculate equals to nothing but the concentration of incipient gelation. Okay. So, that is C m equals to C g okay. and it is given 0 0.105, 10 point uh, 5 percent is given. So, mass percentage, so you can write uh, 0 0.105. Then it is given C b bulk feed concentration is 2 mass percentage. So, in fraction we can write 0 0.02. Rejection coefficient R is given 0 0.98. So, C p equals to the permeate concentration equals to C m into 1 minus R. Okay. So, that is 0 0.105 into 1 minus 0 0.98. Okay. So, your C p equals to 0 0.0021. So, 
the permeability of water, the permeability of solvent can be considered equal to that of pure water. Okay. We are just considering that okay. pure water. Uh, why? Because it is being told that uh, there is uh, uh, no fouling of the membrane has taken place. Okay. So, at the beginning of gelation, okay, at the that when the concentration polarization uh, starts then the gel layer formation is actually starting. So, at we can write at the uh, beginning of gelation, okay. so here C m minus C p divided by C b minus C p the concentration polarization modulus equation equals to C g minus C p divided by C b minus C p. Okay. So, that is what exponential to the power of j w by k l mass transfer coefficient. So, just let us substitute the equations. So, um, point, uh, 0.105 minus point zero zero two one. So, divided by point zero two minus point zero zero two one equals to exponential to the power of j w k l. Okay. So, from here we can write j w by k l equals to 1.748 take l it will become ln of this. Okay. So, now we have to calculate uh, the effective driving force right. So, effective driving force molecular weight of the solute is given as 6000. Okay. So, the concentration of the incipient uh, gelation, so C m equals to C g equals to 105 divided by 6000 equals to 0 0.0175, this is gram moles per liter. So, then your delta pi osmotic pressure equals to delta C R T okay, uh, is 0.0175 okay, into 0 0.0821 is the value of R into uh, T is 25 degree centigrade that is 298 Kelvin. Okay. So, this becomes 0 0.428 atmosphere. So, that is your delta pi. Okay and your delta p that is applied pressure difference is given 1.75 bar we can write it in terms of atmosphere. So, 1.727 atmosphere always be consistent with the units that is very important right. So, your effective driving force driving force is nothing but delta p minus delta pi. Okay. So, that is 1.727 divided minus 0.428. So, effective driving force is 1.299 atmosphere. Okay. So, J w is given 1.8 into 10 power of minus uh, 5 meter cube per meter square second. This is given in the problem statement. Okay. So, and we have calculated uh, that Z w by K l from the concentration polarization equation mo modulus, okay, this is K l is to be 1.748, this is calculated okay, from the concentration polarization equation. So, from here we can calculate the mass transfer coefficient is 1.8 10 power of minus 5 divided by 1.748. So, it is nothing but 1.029 into 10 power of minus 5 meter per second. So, this is your mass transfer coefficient. Now, you have been asked to calculate the liquid velocity, the liquid velocity at which the gel formation will not happen. So, how do you calculate that? Calculate liquid velocity. Okay. So, let us start with Smith number. Okay you know Smith number S c is nothing but mu by rho into d. Okay. So, where mu is the viscosity, so viscosity is given uh, is 5 
cp okay is 5 into 10 power of minus uh, 3 kg per meter second then density is given 1000 since we are assuming uh, water so uh, the solvent has to be the pure water so we can uh, assume take the density of the pure water so that is 1000 kilograms per meter cube and diffusivity is also given 7.8 into 10 power of minus 7 centimeter square per second so let us convert to meter square okay into 10 power of minus 11 meter square per second right now so find out what is smith number so smith number is 5 into 10 we just substitute all these values whatever um, given um, 1000 into 7.8 into 10 power of minus 11 so it becomes 6.41 uh, into 10 power of 5 right now you know serud number number sh okay equals to kl uh, d by d okay so what is this d is the tube diameter hmm? which is given is 1.5 centimeter okay so we can write 0 0.015 meter we are converting everything in terms of meter so you can calculate serud number by substituting all these values so serud number equals to 1.029 into 10 power of minus 5 into 0 0.015 divided by 7.8 into 10 power of minus 11 so your serud number becomes 19 78.8 now you, you know we can write serud number in terms of the reynolds number because ultimately you have to express these things in the terms of reynolds number from where you can calculate velocity directly okay so reynolds number is rho dv by mu so v is there velocity of the fluid so that is how we will calculate it okay so uh, we can write serud number the expression serud number equals to 0 0.023 reynolds number to the power of 0 0.8 and Smith number to the power of 1 by 3. This is Ditter's Boilter equation. Okay. Or we can write this substitute 1978.8 equals to 0 0.023 Reynolds number to the power of 0 0.8. Then Smith number is we got it is 6.41 10 to the power of into 10 to the power of 5 to the power of 1 by 3. So, from here we get Reynolds number is 5608.1. So, what does it indicate? So, indicates turbulence or turbulent flow, right. So, we, we got the Reynolds number. Now, it is very easy to uh, calculate the velocity. So, you know Reynolds number is equals to, okay d v rho by mu okay, or v equals to Reynolds number mu divided by d and rho right. So, just substitute 5608.1 into viscosity is 5 into 10 power of minus 3 uh, d is 1.5 into 10 power of minus 2 into rho is 1000. So, your um, you get v to be 1.86 meter per second so this is v so this is the minimum velocity okay this is what we have calculated is the minimum velocity to be maintained to be maintained okay to keep wall uh, mass transfer coefficient high to prevent gel formation. This is what you have been asked calculate the velocity at which gel formation will not happen right. So, this is how we have calculated I think it is clear to you that how you will calculate any time velocity has been asked please uh, uh, write down your equations in such a way that you can calculate the Reynolds number then it is very easy to calculate your velocity.
If Reynolds number is not directly calculatable, okay, then you can uh, uh, use Smith number and Sherwood number as we have used, okay, uh, different dimensions number. So, this is the importance of dimensionless numbers actually, uh, how you use them in uh, calculating uh, various parameters. So, uh, uh, let us see another uh, small problem, okay. So, it says that a protein solution of 20 grams per liter is processed by using an ultrafiltration membrane. The process was carried out in a total recycle mode that is retentant and permeate are recirculated back to the feed tank. The infringing and apparent rejection coefficients for the protein can be taken as 0 0.9 and 0 0.6 respectively. The permeate flux is given to be 5.8 into 10 to the power of minus 3 centimeter per second, even asked to calculate the mass transfer coefficients. Okay. So, let us see how you will do it. So, your intrinsic uh, rejection uh, coefficient, okay. so is Ri, Ri equals to 0 0.9. And what is Ri? So, Ri equals to 1 minus Cp by Cw and your apparent rejection coefficient Ra is 0 0.6 which is 1 minus Cp by Cb. So, this is the, the difference between uh, uh, apparent and intrinsic. Okay. So, intrinsic is uh, the real actually uh, Cw, Cw is the membrane uh, what uh, membrane uh, concentration, concentration is the surface of the membrane since you cannot calculate it. So, you can use Cb the bulk uh, concentration uh, to calculate the apparent uh, rejection coefficient or sieving coefficient later on. So, your protein concentration Cb is given is 20 uh, grams per liter or we can write 20 kg per meter cube. So, you can calculate Cp then Cp is 1 minus 0 0.6 into 20. So, that is 8 kg per meter cube and we can calculate Cw equals to Cw is 8 divided by 1 minus 0 0.9 is nothing but 80 kg per meter cube. Okay. So, from concentration polarization equation Okay. We know that uh, Cw minus Cp okay, divided by Cb minus Cp is nothing but exponential Jw by Kl. So, this equation we have been used twice here in today's problem. Okay. Uh, so, we can calculate from masters per coefficient from this equal, uh, equation. So, Jw Kl equals to ln uh, of Cw minus Cp divided by C B minus C P. So, which is ln of 80 minus 8 divided by 20 minus 8. Okay. So, it is nothing but 1.791, but uh, you know J W is given. So, you can uh, calculate K L. So, K L equals to your J W is 5.8 into 10 power of minus 5. Okay divided by 1.791. So, your mass transfer coefficient equals to 3.23 into 10 power of minus 5 meter per second. So, this is your mass transfer coefficient. Okay. You know how uh, it is easy to calculate always mass transfer coefficient using the concentration polarization modulus equation provided you know the bulk concentration uh, and uh, any other concentration either the feed uh, this one here permeate concentration or uh, Cw or you can calculate uh, the concentrations if you are uh, you have been given either the sieving coefficients or the uh, rejection coefficients. Okay. So, let us now see two more small small problems. So, this is how you will use the sieving coefficient equations actually. So, the apparent sieving coefficient and intrinsic sieving coefficient SA and SI in an ultrafiltration process were found to be 0 0.6 and 0 0.1 respectively. So, calculate the mass transfer coefficient for a flux of 5.3 into 10 power of minus 6 meter per second. So, you know your SA apparent sieving coefficient equals to 0 0.6 your SI is given to be 0 0.1, your permeate flux is given 5.3 into 10 power of minus 6 meter per second 
Now you can uh, use uh, uh, the equation, so uh, which is ln of S A divided by 1 minus S A equals to ln of S i divided by 1 minus S i plus J w by K L. Right. So, you can write substitute all these values. So, S A is 0 0.6 divided by 1 minus 0 0.6 equals to ln of uh, it is uh, 0 0.1 divided by 1 minus 0 0.1 plus j w is given 5.3 into 10 power of minus 6 divided by k l. Okay. So, from here this equation we can find k l to be 2.04 into 10 power of minus 6 meter per second. So, this is the mass transport curve. It is very easy one, only thing this you need to know this equation. So, this problem and the last problem we have seen that how do we use the apparent uh, sieving coefficients, intrinsic sieving coefficient as well as apparent and uh, intrinsic rejection coefficients to calculate mass transport coefficients. So, a very small problem we will see then we will wind up today's lecture. So, a dextran solution of 4 kilogram per uh, kilometer cube is processed uh, in a ultrafiltration membrane that fully retain the polymer. The limiting flux that is J limiting okay, uh, J lim at a particular cross flow velocity is given to be 2 into 10 power of minus 5 meter per second. The gelation concentration for the dextran is 160 kilo per meter cube. What is the wall concentration at the same cross flow velocity if the permeate flux is given 5.2 into 10 power of minus 6 meter per second. So, let us note down what is been given. So, it is given C b equals to 4 kg per meter cube R a equals to R i equals to given 1 j limiting. Okay. In our ultra filtration lecture we have discussed what is limiting flux. Okay. If you can recall. Uh, then C g equals to 160 kg per meter cube okay. and uh, you know you can use that uh, J limiting equation. So, J lim okay, is K ln C g by C b. So, this is the limiting uh, flux equation. Okay. So, substitute the values. So, uh, 2 into 10 power of minus 5 equals to k ln c g is 160 divided by c b is 4. So, from here uh, we can uh, calculate k equals to 5.42 into 10 power of minus 6 meter per second. At a certain constant probability the permeate flux is given is uh, 5.2 into 10 power of minus 6 meter per second. Okay. So, you have to calculate C w okay, equals to C b exponential to the power of j v by k. So, it is 4 exponential to the power of 5.2 10 power of minus 6 divided by 5.42 10 power of minus 6. Okay. So, C w is 10.44 kg per meter cube. So, this is what uh, you have been asked to calculation uh, calculate what is the wall concentration uh, at the same cross flow velocity if uh, the flux is given as 5.2 into 10 power of minus 6. So, we have today seen uh, how we will use even the limiting flux equation. This is the limiting flux equation okay, J limiting equals to K ln C g by C b um, to calculate the wall or predict the wall concentration. So, thank you very much. Please as I told you in the last class, please see Professor Vikay Dutta's book and Professor Nath's books. They have so many solved uh, examples. Please go through them. And uh, there are so many unsolved examples also, please try to solve them. In case you have any problem, please feel free uh, to write to me at kmohanty at uh, in. And thank you very much. In the next class, uh, we will be discussing dialysis. We will discuss what is the basic principles of dialysis, what is the advantages of dialysis, then different types of membranes that is used for dialysis and uh, modules, then how mass transport happens in dialysis and we will discuss about diffusion or what is known as the Donan dialysis and few applications of dialysis. Um, we will we'll discuss of course, the hemodialysis. This is one of the most important applications. So, thank you very much.